Most people think that the best sales reps are selfish, that they only think about closing the deal from their side, not the buyer's side of the equation. They're focused on the sales funnel rather than the buying process. But as it turns out, the most successful sales reps put 90% of their energy into understanding why a buyer makes a purchase, and they focus on what's known as the buyer's journey, which you can see here on the screen. That's because doing so makes nurturing deals and getting them closed so, so much more easier. And guess what? You can do the same too by moving from a sales process to helping the buyer make a purchasing decision. Hi, my name is Will and I make Selling Simple. Now in today's video, we're gonna cover all things the buyer's journey. First, we're gonna start off with what the buyer journey actually is, including its five stages. Then we're gonna look at how the buying journey has changed in the past few years. Number three, we're gonna look at how you can map your buyer's journey so that you can tweak it for optimal conversions. And then we'll look at how you can implement this and make all this practical today. So let's start with the first most obvious question. What the heck is the buyer's journey? Well, the buyer's journey is basically how your buyers go from being totally unaware of their problem to deciding to purchase your solution. The best way to break down the buyer's journey is to knock it down into five different stages. We've got first off when the buyer has no awareness. This is when the buyer didn't even realize that they've got a problem. Then the buyer moves into the awareness phase. So now they've acknowledged that a problem exists and they're seeking more information about it. Then exploring. This is where the buyer is trying to find the right product to fit the problem, to solve the uh, solution to their problem. This is obviously where we need to be engaging with the buyer. And then there is the comparing vendors stage. This is when the buyer is comparing all of the different vendors. There might be you, there might be someone else, there might be another competitor, and they're weighing up the pros and the cons of each. And then the final step, you have the purchase decision. Where, you guessed it, of course, the buyer makes a decision to purchase a particular solution, which is spending some money, or alternatively, they make the decision to do nothing, which is not good for you, not good for the salespeople that you're competing with either. Now, as the buyer goes through these five distinct stages, they're gonna interact with touch points that push them towards the next stage. A touch point to go from awareness to exploring could be a article, a blog post, a video like this. But there's also gonna be perhaps conversations with sales reps here and here, and at the no awareness phase, who knows what's gonna help them uh, become informed of the problems that they've got. This is where we can add a ton of value as a sales professional. And this brings us on nicely to how the buyer's journey has changed. So here's what the old buyer's journey looked like. About 40% of the journey was covered by marketing. This would be the buyer consuming content and getting guides or watching videos. And they would reach out to a salesperson here and sales would take them 60% of the way towards getting a deal done. But these days, the buyer's journey has changed. Now it's gone inversed on itself. Now content marketing has filled in a lot of the gaps that salespeople used to help the buyer with. And the buyer's only getting in touch at the very final stage where they're comparing vendors to speak to a salesperson. And this model's got even more hands-off since everyone's now selling remotely since the rise of COVID. In fact, a study from McKinsey found that 70 to 80% of B2B decision makers now prefer to have a remote or what's happening here, a digital self-service model to get deals done. And this shift spells out three distinct challenges for salespeople like you and I. First off, the sales cycle is longer than ever, which means even more in-depth sales cadences and customer lifetime value and adding and giving and giving before we get a deal done most of the time. Next, our content that we're both sharing with our prospects and that hopefully someone in marketing is creating for us is gotta be more strategic. B2B buyers are now consuming at least 13 pieces of content before making a buying decision. As a result, your content that you're producing, that you're sharing, and also what marketing are handing over to you for via sales enablement, for you to hand out, needs to be specifically tailored to the buyer's journey at the stage that the buyer's in, and a little bit more on that in a second, otherwise it's just not gonna be effective. And finally, I really want you to think about this, having an education first, salesmanship second mindset as we move forward, probably into an oncoming recession, and then hopefully a, another 10 year period of, of loads of business and deals on the back of that. Because longer relationships, a more complicated buying journey, and fewer sales rep touch points mean that buyers are gonna focus more and more on the value that you provide, less so on the, the charm, the charisma, being able to take them to the golf course uh, for a round of golf at the weekend, all this stuff that used to happen in sales 20 years ago, none of that is important anymore. What's important now is 
insights and helping them navigate the more complex B2B buying process. So the question now is how can you lean into the buyer's journey so that you can tailor your sales cycle to this new reality and, and add more value and get more deals done. And this is exactly where the buyer's journey framework from inside Seller Made Simple Academy comes in. First step is to understand where you meet your customers. If you're meeting your prospects early on in the buyer's journey that we touched about before, the, the five, one, two, three, four, five steps that they go through before they make a purchasing decision at the end, then you need to adjust your content, your touch points, everything that you do based on that fact. Because rather than having a sales conversation with a prospect at the, the no awareness phase, it's better to leave things to a well-crafted piece of educated content to help them become aware of the problem that they have. And now on top of this, it's worth mentioning, of course, every industry is gonna be different. So don't be afraid to experiment with different methods here as you help the buyer navigate through these different steps of the process. And then we're gonna move on to step two. Where have they been? What was the last step that the buyer was on? What kind of content have they already consumed? Who produced the content that they consumed? How engaged are they? And at this point, are they dealing with you or are they dealing with 27 different vendors? This is really important as it's gonna shape your sales strategy moving forward. Do you need to convince at this point a prospect to consume your content and you're gonna have to put in more effort to shift them over to that? Or are they already on board? Are they already very likely to buy from you? You need to push them through the extra steps without giving them more hurdles to run at. Next up, we're gonna look at what pain the buyer is in right now because the pain is gonna differ depending on which one of the segments of the buyer journey that they're actually in. For example, if they're in this first segment of unawareness, they don't even know that they've got any pain, even though they might be getting absolutely hammered on, on costs or lack of resources or stress, they don't realize that things could be different. And knowing which pain points match up with which part of the buyer's journey is essential for you delivering the right message to the prospect at the right time. So here are a few examples of possible pain points for each stage of the process. At no awareness, the buyer might be thinking, I know my business can be run more efficiently, but I don't know how to achieve that. At awareness, they might be thinking, okay, there's a gap in our process that I need to understand better. Next, at exploring solutions, they might be thinking, hey, well, we just don't know which solution is gonna solve our problem. Then when they're comparing vendors, they're looking at which product offers the features that we need to make this a successful solution. Then purchasing decision, they might think, I'm concerned this isn't the right decision and they might need a little bit of reinforcement. Then the fourth step of the buyer's journey framework, we're gonna look at what their next step in the process is. So if they're currently here, where do they need to go? What's the next step gonna be? Now, this is slightly controversial, but I believe this is gonna be more and more true moving forward, but less and less common. The best case scenario for you is if the buyer is gonna be moving from the no awareness phase to the awareness phase. Because at that point, if you can touch out to them, if you can get them on an email cadence, if you can send them some content, if you can get them on the phone, you are immediately the front runner for getting the deal done. And this is where it all gets real, the final step of the process. We need to work out how are we gonna get the buyer to the next stage? Because if they don't progress from stage to stage, the deal is never gonna happen. Remember, the deal is always at the end. There's always this linearity in B2B sales. We're always nudging the buyer towards making a decision, whether it is a no or a yes. A no sometimes can be just as valuable because we can then wipe them out of our, our process, wipe them out of our content, wipe them out of our cadence, and we don't need to waste time on them. But obviously, we want as many yeses as possible. We do this by moving the buyer from stage to stage to stage and don't let them digress or go into other people's buying journeys. And most of the time, it's gonna be valuable content or a phone call that's gonna, that's gonna do the trick, that's gonna get the prospect to move from one step to another. Now, in general, and these are quite broad things I'm gonna say here, you wanna keep content to earlier stages of the process, pretty simple. You wanna use blogs, social media posts, that kind of thing. And for the later stages of the buyer's journey, you can get them on the phone, get them on a Zoom call, and then you do consulting with them. You really get into the weeds with the issues, your product specifications, any white papers, case studies, any referrals, any testimonials, things like that typically come towards the end of the buyer's journey. But what is important here is that you're meeting your prospects where they are and you're ushering them to the next step. Skip all the fancy sales nonsense from the 80s and 90s. Focus on education and progressing the sale. That's all you've got to do to win in modern B2B selling. And not taking the buyer-focused approach isn't wrong in principle, because really your job is to be a problem solver, not kind of a huckster, right? But 
when you do it, the benefit for you is it makes qualifying, nurturing, understanding your buyers and closing prospects just so much, much easier. So remember, first off, the buyer's journey is a five-step process where your prospects move through each step before they become a customer. No awareness, awareness, exploring solutions, comparing vendors, and making a purchase decision. Number two, understand that the buyer's journey has shifted recently to make sales cycles longer, strategic content even more important, and this education first, sales, sleazy salesmanship, second mindset is going to be valuable to you in the rest of your career from this point onwards. And number three, finally, if you want to map your buyer's journey, just understand where do you meet your buyers? Where have they been? The pain that they're in right now, what the next step is, and then importantly, how you are going to get them there. Because if you're the only person in the perspective from your buyer that can get them from their pain to where they want to be, of course, they're going to have to work with you. You're going to get a deal done. You're going to get a big fat commission check in your pocket every quarter. And that's what I'm here to help you with. So with that said, make sure you're tweaking your cadences to deliver the right content to the right person at the right part of the buying cycle. And that's what's ultimately going to lead to more sales. So if you enjoyed this video, why not click the video that's on the screen right now and continue making selling simple.